I am here today not because I want to be. I am terrified. I am here because I believe it is my civic duty to tell you what happened to me while Brett Kavanaugh and I were in high school. I have described the events publicly before. I summarized them in my letter to Ranking Member Feinstein and again in a letter to Chairman Grassley. I understand and appreciate the importance of your hearing from me directly about what happened to me and the impact that it has had on my life and on my family. I have been a good judge. And for this nomination, another FBI background investigation, another American Bar Association investigation, 31 hours of hearings, 65 senator meetings, 1,200 written questions, more than all previous Supreme Court nominees combined. Throughout that entire time, throughout my 53 years and seven months on this earth until last week, no one ever accused me of any kind of sexual misconduct. No one ever. A lifetime, a lifetime of public service and a lifetime of high profile public service at the highest levels of American government and never a hint of anything of this kind. And that's because nothing of this kind ever happened. When I got to the small gathering, people were drinking beer in a small living room, family room type area on the first floor of the house. I drank one beer. Brett and Mark were visibly drunk. Early in the evening, I went up a very narrow set of stairs leading from the living room to a second floor to use the restroom. When I got to the top of the stairs, I was pushed from behind into a bedroom across from the bathroom. I couldn't see who pushed me. Brett and Mark came into the bedroom and locked the door behind them. There was music playing in the bedroom. It was turned up louder by either Brett or Mark once we were in the room. I was pushed onto the bed and Brett got on top of me. He began running his hands over my body and grinding into me. I yelled, hoping that someone downstairs might hear me. And I tried to get away from him, but his weight was heavy. Brett groped me and tried to take off my clothes. He had a hard time because he was very inebriated and because I was wearing a one-piece bathing suit underneath my clothing. I believed he was going to rape me. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling. This is what terrified me the most and has had the most lasting impact on my life. It was hard for me to breathe, and I thought that Brett was accidentally going to kill me. I was not at the party described by Dr. Ford. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process, but you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. Since my nomination in July, there has been a frenzy on the left to come up with something, anything, to block my confirmation. I'm not questioning that Dr. Ford may have been sexually assaulted by some person in some place at some time. But I have never done this to her or to anyone. That's not who I am. It is not who I was. I am innocent of this charge. I intend no ill will to Dr. Ford and her family. The other night, Ashley and my daughter Liza said their prayers, and little Liza, all 10 years old, said to Ashley, we should pray for the woman. Brett's assault on me dr drastically altered my life. For a very long time, I was too afraid and ashamed to tell anyone these details. I did not want to tell my parents that I, at age 15, was in a house without any parents present, drinking beer with boys. 
I convinced myself that because Brett did not rape me, I should just move on and just pretend that it didn't happen. Over the years, I told very, very few friends that I had this traumatic experience. I told my husband before we were married that I had experienced a sexual assault. I had never told the details to anyone, the specific details, until May 2012 during a couple's counseling session. If she's saying Mark Judge was in the room then, then he should be in the room here today. Uh, would you want him called as a witness? Senator, this allegation w came into the committee. Oh, no, no, I, I'm just asking the question. Would you want him to be here as a witness? He's, he's already provided sworn testimony to the committee. This allegation has been hidden well, by the committee, uh, no, by, by no, members of the committee. It hasn't been, it has not been investigated by the FBI. The committee has refused to allow it to be. It was dropped on me, it was sprung. It was not investigated by the FBI and he has not been called where he might be under Should have been handled in the due course, Senator. No, then, when he came I, in, I would uh, I would disagree with that. I've been on this committee 44 years, both Republicans and Democrats. I've never seen somebody that critical and not allowed to be here to uh, call to be testified or an FBI background. But let me he's, ask, he's provided sworn testimony, and the and, uh, he and, has, and Senator he has not Senator, been, let me let me finish. He uh, the 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 allegation came in weeks ago, and and nothing was done with it by the ranking member, uh, and then it sprung uh, on me. Judge Kavanaugh, I've heard your, your line and you've, you've stated it over and over again, and uh, I have that well in mind, but let me ask you this. He authored a book titled Wasted, Tales of a Gen X Drunk. He references a Bart o. Kavanaugh vomiting in someone's car during Beach Week and then passing out. Is that you that he's talking about? Senator, uh, Mark Judge uh, was... Uh, to your knowledge, is that you that he's talking about? I'll explain if you let me. Pro proceed, please. Mark Judge was a friend of ours in high school who developed a very serious drinking problem, an addiction problem, that lasted decades and was very difficult for him to, to escape from. And uh, he nearly died. And then he, developed, then he had leukemia as well on top of it. Now, as part of his therapy, or part of his coming to grips with sobriety, he wrote a book that is a fictionalized book uh, and an account. I think he I picked out names of friends of ours to throw them in as kind of close to what, for characters in the book. So, so you know, you we can know sit what, here. We don't know whether that's you or not. We can sit here and you like make, make fun of some guy who has an addiction. I'm not making I don't think fun that of really anybody, makes, uh, is really good. I'm trying to get a straight answer from you under oath. Are you uh, Bart Kavanaugh that he's referring to? Yes or no? That's you'd easy. have to ask him. Well, I agree with you there. You know you are not on trial. <laughs> you are not on trial. You are sitting here before members of the United States Senate's Judiciary Committee because you had the courage to come forward because as you have said, you believe it was your civic duty. I was struck in your testimony by what you indicated as your intention when you first let anyone associated with these hearings know about it. And what you basically said is, you reached out to your representative in the United States Congress, hoping that person would inform the White House before Judge Kavanaugh had been named. That's extremely persuasive about your motivation for coming forward. And so I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your courage, and I want to tell you I believe you. If you wanted an FBI investigation, you could have come to us. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You've said that, not me. You've got nothing to apologize for. When you see Sotomayor and Kagan, tell them that Lindsey said hello, because I voted for them. I would never do to them what you've done to this guy. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. 
Are you a gang rapist? No. I cannot imagine what you and your family have gone through. Boy, y'all want power. God, I hope you never get it. I hope the American people can see through this sham. That you knew about it and you held it. You had no intention of protecting Dr. Ford. None. She's as much of a victim as you are. God, I hate to say it because these have been my friends. But let me tell you, when it comes to this, you're looking for a fair process. You came to the wrong town at the wrong time, my friend. Dr. Ford, the Republicans prosecutor has asked you all kinds of questions about who you called and when, asking details that would be asked in a cross-examination of a witness in a criminal trial. But this is not a criminal proceeding. This is a confirmation proceeding. I think I know what she's trying to get at. So I'll just ask you very plainly, Dr. Ford, is there a political motivation for your coming forward with your account of the assault by Brett Kavanaugh? No, and I'd like to reiterate that, again, I was trying to get the information to you while there was still a list of other, thank you, what looked like equally qualified candidates. If you, Judge Kavanaugh, turned to Don McGahn and to this committee and say, for the sake of my reputation, my family name, and to get to the bottom of the truth of this, I am not going to state be an obstacle to an FBI investigation. I would hope that all the members of the committee would join me in saying, we're going to abide by your wish wishes, and we will have that investigation. I, I welcome whatever the committee wants to do, because I'm telling the truth. I want to know what you want to do. I, I'm telling the truth. I want to know what you want to do, Judge. I'm innocent. I'm innocent of this charge. Then you're prepared for an FBI investigation? They don't reach conclusions. You reach the conclusions. No, Senator. but they do investigate questions. I'm, I'm and innocent. And you can't have it both ways, Judge. You can't say here at the beginning, I wanted a hearing moment, Look, I welcome thing, any kind of investigation. This thing was sprung on me. This. this thing was sprung at the last minute after being held by staff. You know. Judge? And I called, for, no I called for a to, hearing immediately. If there is no truth to her charges... The FBI investigation will show that. Are you afraid that they might not? Oh, come on, Jay Whip. The FBI does not reach. Con you know, you know this is. You know that's a phony well, question because the FBI doesn't reach conclusions. So let, they just go. provide the 302s. With 302s, so I can explain to people who don't know what that is. What? They just go and do what you're doing. Yeah. Ask questions and then type up a report. They don't reach the bottom this line. Morning. In the end, there is likely to be as much doubt as certainty going out of this room today. And that as we make decisions going forward, I, I hope that people will recognize that. And in the rhetoric that we use and the language that we use going forward, that we'll recognize that, that there is doubt. Do you believe in God? I do. I'm going to give you a last opportunity. We're right here, right in front of God and country. I want you to look me in the eye. Are Dr. Ford's allegations true? They're not accurate as to me. I have not questioned that she might have been sexually assaulted at some point in her life by someone, someplace. But as to me, I've never done this. Never done this to her or to anyone else. And I've talked to you about uh, what I was doing that summer of 1982, but I'm telling you, I've never done this to anyone, including her. Are Ms. Ramirez's allegations about you true? Uh, those are not. Um, she, um, no, no, none of the witnesses in the room support that. Uh, the, if that, that had happened, that would have been the talk of campus uh, in our freshman dorm. The New York Times reported that as recently as last week, uh, she was calling other classmates seeking to, well, I'm not going to characterize it, but calling classmates last week and just seemed very, um, I'll just stop there. But it's not true. It's not true. Are Ms. Swetnick's allegations made by Mr. Avenatti about you true? Those are not true. Never met her. Don't know who she is. There's a letter released within 
two hours of that breaking yesterday from, I think, 60 people who knew me in high school, men and women, who said it was, uh, their words, nonsense, totally, you know, the whole thing, that totally ridiculous. None of these allegations are true? Correct. No doubt in your mind? Zero. I'm 100% certain. Not even a scintilla? Not a scintilla. 100% certain, Senator. You swear to God? I swear to God. 